This is terrible. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> this lighter every time. Jesus Christ. We in the studio. Man. Praise the Lord, niggas. Praise the Lord, niggas. How's everybody doing out there tonight? Uh, let me so see your outfits. Let me see your shoes. Mm, mm, mm. Shout out to Freddie Jackson. Jackson. Watch my no, no. Do not shout out Freddie Jackson. You know Why? I can't stand that nigga. I can't stand Freddie Jackson. Did I tell you about the time I was at Melba's and Freddie Jackson was in there? <laughs> Wait, why am I going to Melba's tomorrow? I have a reservation. <laughs> I love Melba's. Melba's used to be my joint. Shout out to Melba's on Frederick Douglass Boulevard in Harlem. Oh, Oh my gosh, that macaroni and cheese is life changing. Wait, so you saw Freddie Jackson and Melba's and what? Me and Latoya was having dinner <laughs> at Melba's. Just the two of us at home. We were just there, hungry apparently. Um, and we was the, literally at the table next to us. Latoya was like, "Girl, I think that's Freddie Jackson." <laughs> and I was like, "You are my lady, Freddie Jackson. <laughs> You're everything I need." Boo. <laughs> Don't hate. I hate for no Don't hate. Cause when he came down that elevator at Stefan Raquel's laboratory, <laughs> that was lit. Five lit. Okay. No, sis. I as if, as a kid, I hated Freddie Jackson. Like I would cry when his voice would come on the radio. I hated Freddie Jackson. Freddie he Jackson and Michael like, McDonald. I can't stand either. Oh one my one. god. I don't even think we could be friends anymore. How do you hate fight Michael? Me, Mc- fight me. Michael McDonald? Cause he he represents everything that gentrification is. Nah, nah, nah. I can't Ooh. let you have that one. No, like I accept Adele, but Michael McDonald no, can go. No, Michael McDonald. No, how you gonna accept Adele? Are you kidding me? Cause I just don't fuck with Santa Claus like that. You don't like music for real. I do love music. I nah, just oh, nah, 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 me nah, out. Nah, nah. He Bruh. stressed me out. Bruh. He really, truly does. <laughs> Yo, mo be there. I can't. Shut. I don't. <laughs> Just shut your mouth. This conversation is Who's over. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to Getting Grown. This is a podcast where Jade and I argue profusely and we discuss things, <laughs> all things related to being an adult and how we're fumbling and finding our way through this thing called life. We, we thank you for joining us. Shout out to all of our faithful listeners. Everybody who's new to the ride, buckle your seatbelts, guys. Me and Jade are both Ridiculous. pretty tr- Pretty ridiculous. I was going to say trash, but ridiculous is also appropriate. What you do this week? Ciao. I was working this week. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what? Honestly, July is an intense time in my job, like in June and July. So I I feel like now that we're coming up on August 1, shout out to August. I feel like my summer vacation or not even just like the the rest and kind of like feeling like, you know, um, you know how summertime is supposed to be a break? I feel like my summer break is now starting in August and niggas is about to go back to school. But uh, Summertime. Oh, gosh. Jeez. I like jazz. No, you don't because you do. don't like Michael McDonald. He's anyway, not jazz. He's, f- you, he's music. He's he faux is music. R&B. He is faux R&B. You, I just, I just don't know. Soul. I don't know if we're going to be faux. able to recover from this. I Foul. just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> All the church kids will know. Michael McDougal, Michael McDonald did a song with the Winans called Love Has No Color. And let the, me tell you something. Even though the concept is trash. Let me, that's not true. The I take back. Aren't those, never mind. I'm not going to say it. You're going to say something disrespectful about the Winans. <laughs> I was hanging up. I'm hanging up now. <laughs> anyway. But Love Has No Color. I remember me and my brother singing that. That. Michael McDonald sings from his toes. He does. He's one of those kind of singers you feel like all his toes is balled up in his shoes when he sings. Let me be very clear. I never said Michael McDonald wasn't talented. There's a difference between hating on somebody and hating somebody. I just don't like him. Mm-hmm. I can't. That's his fine. voice like makes me. I can't. I can't rock with it. But yeah. So yeah, you've been working. You got a break. You're ha- I've been working. I have a break. Yeah, that's pretty much. This weekend, I had lots to do. 
Lots of errands to run in preparation. My family's in town visiting this week, so yeah, Kia's mom was here, and we recording. I saw y'all talking shit. I mean, I don't think they would. I think it's a valid question. The people were concerned, and I respect it. That's why I just yeah, respond. Yeah, I'm glad your mom's in town, but we getting that show up exactly. <laughs> I still show up to work. You know what I'm saying? I I took my family to IHOP and said, "Hey, y'all, I've got to go. All right, let's wrap this up. Can wrap rent? up your." Can I just tangent? Can I just tangent real quick? Girl, like, you since when you asked the permission to tangent? I know. I just tonight I feel like being polite. So right. I I hate IHOP, but it's fine. So Mm-mm. but randomly like IHOP me. has the most delicious honey mustard. It's creamy. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like perfectly sweet palates. You add a little hot sauce to it. It is so pleasant with a chicken tender when you're forced to go to IHOP with your friends at 4.30 in the Man, morning. Man, because the niggas always want to go to IHOP and ask Every someone time. who doesn't breakfast. I'm not really... Breakfast and I don't really have a relationship. No, like I'm, in, I'm in a, I'm in a situation ship with breakfast. Yeah, like sometimes <laughs> you know we real good. You know what I'm saying? Like side, breakfast is my side chick. I don't really yeah. have to have it. You know what I'm saying? But, no, but the you girls have, to have it though. Like occasionally you need a waffle in your life. The girls always want to go to IHOP, and I'm always just like, okay, I don't really care. I don't want to go. Have chicken sandwiches. Exactly. I like. Can, <laughs> I be everyone ordering omelets and pancakes and waffles, and I'm like, I'd like an order of mozzarella sticks, please. <laughs> I Thank and you. some fries. Okay. Yes, please. Honey mustard. <laughs> and your honey mustard, your creamy, delicious, <laughs> randomly wonderful honey mustard, please. Oh my gosh. The girls always want, especially after church, the saints always want to move to IHOP. Yeah. And I, I, go, like, I go to eat with uh, them like 3 p.m. Well, that's when the saints be in, in there too, because, you know, church be, church be long sometimes. But Speaking anyway. of the saints, so Jacobs, um, the wonderful after church <laughs> from the 90s in Harlem. <laughs> Random. So, because so, I went so this weekend, I went to well, not this weekend. This whatever. I don't know what day it was because I don't know what day it is. Um, I went to see Girls Trip with Fran and Crystal. What is it? Listen, wasn't it good? It was so good, sis. It was so funny. I called Crystal right after I saw it, and I was just like, "Girl, why we ain't see this like together?" <laughs> I know we needed to go as a foursome. You need to Bruh. just. Like, Son. Like, come on, son. Like, just come on. Who is going to pay me? Does anybody have yes. a job for me? Sis, I walked past the Popeyes that you and I bonded in. It's closed. <laughs> the one on 135th? Yeah. Down the street from uh, and, Bobby's old apartment. And oh, Adam Clayton Powell? Oh, Adam Clayton Powell. What? It's closed. Ain't nobody told the one me. Adam Clayton Powell. The it's one like down one... The... Adam Clayton Powell and something. 130 something. But it's... It's closed. The right now, I said, I said, "Oh, that's me and Kia's Popeyes. That's where we bonded right after we compared booties." But um, so we went <laughs> to go see Girls Trip. I went. To, I had. Uh, we went and did the food from Makosa this weekend. It was amazing. Shout out to all the listeners who came up and said something and spoke. Right. Um, we really appreciate you guys. I hope I was not short. I was uh, just moving. I was just moving and grooving. So thank you guys she, for, for coming to say hello. Shout out to the young lady who uh, approached me at the Carolina kitchen after church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you, says. Carolina kitchen is delicious. It is. I plan to take my family there tomorrow. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, man. I just think that. You know, it's it's. I'm still getting used to people coming up to you and, and coming up to me and saying, "Are you Kia?" <laughs> it's, <laughs> like it's literally every time it happens, people. Be, me and Jay were just talking about this before we started recording. Like there have been times where people have been like, "Do you have a podcast?" And I'll be like, "No, no. uh, uh-uh. nah." Mm. <laughs> just because it's still a little, it's just a little off putting, especially <laughs> for someone who is so introverted like myself. But you're like, "No, no, my name is Charlene." Yes. <laughs> My name is Lisa. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm generally high, so it's fine. Um, but it's fine. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mind. I'm just getting used to it. So uh, shout out to the young lady who stopped and uh, said hello. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks to everyone who listens. I love the family that we're cultivating here on Getting Grown yes. Pod. Um, we're having a good time. A wang dang doodle. And uh, yes, yeah, sis, you ready for a shout out to my sis? I'm ready for shout out to my sis. Oh, <laughs> that was like the Tom Jones version of it. 
Because when I'm tired, my vibrato gets wide. Yes. <laughs> it gets wide and sloppy. Oh, let do it. Like crash. Wait, wait. Crash cuts. Oh, Have God. You- How you going to ask me if I ever see crash cut? He was grooving. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> What are we doing? Okay. My sis is popping right now. Like. Shout out to my sis. Shout out to my sis, Trin. All right. So this week, I think Jade has somebody to shout out and I have somebody to shout out. Sis, sis. do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. I did. I want to shout out Jordan Matthews. You can check her out um, on her Instagram at underscore Jordan Matthews, two T's. Or Jordan Dash Matthews dot com. She does hand painted t shirts and she's based out of Baltimore. She sent me a really cute shirt where she did some patches of some hand painted work. Um, you can check out some of her bomber jackets, her dad hats, uh, all of that. Like she does some really, really fly Afro punkish type of type of vibes. So make sure you check her out at Jordan dash matthews.com or underscore jordan matthews on instagram and she reached out to me too yeah i can't wait till you get your shirt it's a very cute shirt it's super cute i can't wait to wear mine and i'm gonna make sure i tag it and all that right fran said i have to come to afropunk and i'm still praying Sis, about it you have to i think Ooh, well, i, feel I like think you funny. might actually have to but we'll send an email about that <laughs> oh look at that <laughs> damn when is it yeah mama um the last weekend in august i think Listen, last, I gotta consult last. my date book or whatever because you know the Let me tell you something, Raphael Sadiq and Solange is gonna be there. And if you get a wristband, then you gonna be there too. Thank you. Solange. Solange. Solo. I didn't, I didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna shout out a young lady. And I am sorry, sis, if I do not say your name correctly, ask someone with a name that is, you know, uh, unconventional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I take print name pronouncing someone's name very seriously so if i if i say this wrong charge my head and not my heart but this shout out goes to kiaya white um who is a 25 year old graduate student um getting a master's in student affairs in higher education um she also started a business called black and bold it's a t-shirt line that's created to empower black folks to embrace who we are unapologetically and she sent both jade and myself some of her shirts and they're super cute. Um, she has a shirt that says black, bold and bougie, which speaks directly to my spirit, man. Mm-hmm. She has some black girl magic shirt. She has a very nice black boy joy shirt that I really like. Um, she Jay- is my favorite that I right. wore this weekend actually. And I need to make sure that I wear again and tag. Yes. It says, fuck it. I'll do it. Black women. That's right. <laughs> Because that's what we've been saying for centuries. Yes. Uh, so, yes, yeah, she sent us these awesome shirts. I can't wait to wear mine. I don't I don't really leave my house that much. So as soon as I go somewhere, sis, I'm going to wear it. <laughs> and I'll make sure that I tag it on all the social media so that uh, y'all can check it out. Um, her website is blackandbowllc.com. The T-shirts are there and as well as other products that she carries. Um, and any other questions, uh, you know, any answers to any of the questions that you might have, you can find on the website. So be sure to check it out and make sure you tell them that getting grown sent you. So shout out to Kiaya White and blackandbold.com. Hey, 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 ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's time to gather around the kitchen table for another edition of Kitchen Table Talk. Snacks, sis, what are you snacking on today? Oh, my leftover nachos from Makosa. Tell me about these nachos, because I know these are not no regular degular nachos. They're not, so I'm going to go into full detail. Um, we got our, our, our chips from a Mexican um, warehouse, and they make them there. They fry them in the house. Mm. And then we made our own homemade pickles to go on top. Pickled jalapeno, red onion, and radishes. Ooh. Um, we did a cheese sauce with multiple cheeses. And of course, you know, the roux and all of that. And we did some some crushed tomato in there. And then I roasted a shit ton of chicken, seasoned it down, roasted it, and then made sure I did it with the bone and the skin to keep it juicy. And then pulled it and took all the skin and the bones and threw them away. And then like had pulled chicken on top of the nachos. They were quite delicious, I must say myself. Well, that sounds absolutely delightful. Thank you. 
What's what do you have today at your kitchen table? Any leftover? You know, I don't IHOP? really have. I don't have any leftover. I do have leftover <laughs> IHOP, but the question is, will I eat it? I don't. <laughs> I don't think that I will. But um, when when the waitress asked me if I wanted to wrap up my food, my grandfather was like, "Yes." So I was like, "Okay." <laughs> oh, um, man, I love him. D da. It's D da. That's my accent. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's you saying it incorrectly. No. <sighs> um. So I'm not eating my leftover IHOP. I think, you know, I'm just going to be honest right now. I'm actually drinking some apple cider vinegar, like the apple cider vinegar natural drink. This is apple cider vinegar and honey. Yeah, I've been looking at that. How is that? Is that how does that taste? Now, apple cider vinegar itself makes me feel like I'm going to die. Like every time I would drink it straight, yes. I would literally just wait for my heart to stop beating because yeah. I felt like death was imminent. Yeah, but you feel the heat of the devil in your bones. Like literally feeling <laughs> like my organs are shutting down one by one. Yes. But I thought that because that is so gross that these brag natural drinks that are apple cider vinegar based would be just as horrible. But they are actually pretty good and they only contain like distilled water apple cider vinegar and honey like there's no nothing else in here but they must have gotten the A nice balance the balance right because mm -hmm. these are tolerable i'm just drinking this trying to keep my inflammation down in my body so and keep my metabolism you know revved up because you know at some point you know especially as a woman of a particular age my metabolism i have to give her a good old pep talk every day because she will just lay down on me she will just lay down on me but yeah that's what i'm those are my snacks. Oh, those are such responsible snacks today. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I'm I'm complimenting. I'm balancing out your nachos because that's what I would like to have, honestly. They're delicious. Anywho. Yeah, so Kitchen Table Talk. This week's Kitchen Table Talk is inspired by an event that I had the honor of participating in as a facilitator. One of my good, good friends and my hairstylist, Tania of The Green Room, uh, she has a shop now in Silver Spring, hosted an event called Girl Talk in the Green Room. Mm -hmm. She literally just uh, invited about, it was about 18, 15 to 18 women in our 30s to come to the shop after hours and talk about things over wine and cookies and fruit. And everyone was respond. everyone was asked to bring a topic and write it down on paper, bring a, either, it could be a topic that they wanted to chat about, a question that they had and just kind of throw out to generate some discussion, everyone was asked to bring one. We pulled them out of a hat and literally just talked all night. And it was amazing. So one of the discussion questions that came up really struck me and it made me think. So I thought that we could talk about it here on the show. So the question was, who are you? When we're asked, you know, like if someone asks you, who are you? You, you respond in terms of what you possess, mm -hmm. whether that be your material things, what you have, what you've earned in terms of how much money you have, what kind of job you work with, what credentials you have, or you speak in terms of your relationships. Like some, you'll say, I'm a mom, mm -hmm. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm the oldest, you know, those kinds of things. Right. So the question was, who are you without using any of those things? So who are you? Just adjectives. Who are you at your core? Who are you fundamentally? And then, you know, from that discussion, we talked about what, why it's important for us to know that and be engaged with that. Because so I wanted to ask you that question um, and then I'll answer it. Oh, myself. So, sis, who are you? Oh, this is so deep. Isn't it? It's like, oh, my gosh. I feel like I should put wrap my hair up and light a candle or Where something. Am I? I'm lighting a candle for you. Uh -huh, um, I bet. <laughs> um, who am I? That is a very uh, that is a very profound question. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. You said it. Our natural inclination is to always jump up. My natural inclination is to be like I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm a chef. Um, I will say I am a chef. I will say that because I thoroughly enjoy food to its core. I mean, I'm not bougie by any means, but I love food in all different capacities. And I enjoy, like, it is my relaxing time. It is my time to myself when I get to prepare a meal. And that's why I thrive off of being able to do that from scratch. Um, and I enjoy hosting. I enjoy, you know, feeding people. I enjoy serving people. But as far as myself, I'm... A pretty self-assured person. 
I think I'm pretty confident in who I am. Um, I could, I, I have, I have also a, a very uh, angry person. <laughs> I'm quick, hmm. I'm quick to jump down your throat, and I'm working on that. But I know that is who I am at my core, which right. is why I have to put work in <laughs> with right. that. Um, I want ah. Gosh, there's so many things. I want to hear your response, actually. And wow. Then come back, and then come back to me. Okay. I feel like that's cheating. But I... It is low-key, but play, it's fine. I play along. <laughs> I am... I wrote down a couple of things, and I didn't want to give myself a lot of words, so I literally wrote I am statements. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just kind of expound on each one. Okay. So the first one is I am discovering. Okay. Because I feel like my purpose and who I am... Um, even like professionally, personally, spiritually, I feel like my position is always, um, learning, Ex- um, you know, exploring, examining, investigating, like I do research for a living. So my mind is always questioning and not from a critical place, but more from a place of, I want to know, um, mm-hmm. I really want to be informed and there's a blessing that's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> we can talk about that a little bit more later. Um, I also wrote down that I'm fragile, not in the sense of weakness, mm-hmm. because I, I, I'm not a weak, a weak person, but more in the sense of I should be handled with care. And that's a message for me and a message for those around me. And I, I feel like I'm getting better and stronger at communicating that message. I have recognized and have come to learn that there are things about who I am that are sacred and precious, mm-hmm. pre- precious and <laughs> to be cherished. And for a, lo- a long time, I gave a lot of that away. Not in like a, not always in like a physical way, because, you know, your time, mm-hmm. your body, your, your attention, but also in terms of like my heart and, you know, just putting p- like, I'm, I'm learning when to speak and when to be quiet. Mm-hmm. who to share certain things with because you know it goes back to that that fragility mm-hmm. and you know when there's something that you have I, I I'm not entirely sure what it is yet but I feel like there is something that I have that is precious and while I'm figuring out what that is I have to be real real careful with it because I don't want to compromise it um, so that means I have to be very selective about what I surround myself with, who I surround myself with, what I feed myself in terms of like what I'm taking in. I can take trash TV in doses, but I'm learning that I've got to temper my intake of that because, you know, all that stuff is feeding a place in who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm healing is another, is another thing that I wrote down. Mm -hmm. And, And that's on a lot, a lot of fronts, all the trauma of life, Mm-hmm. whatever it may be, loss, sickness, uh, disappointment, just just all the crazy that we have to deal with. It's a process of healing that you have to go through. And when you're just knowing what healing is, like, you know, it's painful, it's uncomfortable. If you think about like it in, in the terms of like rehab, I remember when I was going to the grief counselor just after my brother passed mm-hmm. and she gave me like a really good analogy that has really stuck with me. And she was like, if you were in a car accident and you lost a leg, would you expect yourself to be back to work? Like nothing ever happened in just three weeks time. No. Right. Cause you know, like that's right. stupid. Right. But she was like, you lost somebody, you lost something that's bigger to you than one of your limbs. Like you lost a whole person. Mm-hmm. And the process of healing, she was like, you know, it goes from, you know, whatever surgeries you have to go through that. If you, you if you're going to wear a prosthesis, you have to pick that you have to be fitted for it. You have to learn how to use it. All that stuff takes time. So the process of healing is is, is also very much a big one. So those are those are my words. Discovering healing. Fragile. There was another one, but I, I don't see it. It's a, in the notes. <laughs> My notes are terrible, but y'all remember. But yeah, I think those are those are mine. And I think what's good about this is like, you know, if you ask me next month, my words will probably change. And that's okay. Yeah. So, sis, I'm coming back to you. Are you done? Or yes. <laughs> or 
No, You're done? no, okay. I'm not, no. So right. I, I just, I did cheat, but I cheated not in where I want to steal your answers, but where I just needed your format. Mm-hmm. That's all. I just needed your, uh, your Excel file so that I could input my information. <laughs> Come on, here, spreadsheet. So I'm growing, for sure, uh, because there are ways in which I would react or uh, before, whereas now, I've said before, I've mentioned I'm learning now how to respond to certain things. And I still react to certain things, and I still feel like I'm well within my right to do so when it, you know, when it pertains to the situation. But I'm growing in that sense. I am a contradiction. Mm. I'm going to say that. I always grew up, like, I kind of grew up in a, like, a very, like, a house that that was like full of contradictions, whereas, you know, it was kind of a hippie household, but it was also a very uh, militant household. It was mm-hmm. a very, it was a very black household, and I appreciate actually both sides of that because it's given me so many different experiences. So while I can, you know, on one hand tell you all that my father came home one day and said that we were gonna get a pet goose. Mm-mm-mm. I can also say that, like, I, you know, he also woke me up at 10 o'clock and said, we're going to go see Malcolm X. And I'm, you know, very grateful that he, he exposed me to those things and, and made us read the books and just just taught me so much. So I'm such a contradiction in that way, whereas there's a lot of peace that I want. I don't ever instigate anything with anybody. I never start a fight with anybody. I stand by my word on that. But let me tell you something. I'll finish it. That's Quit. it. I'll finish it. Ain't like, nobody mad. Finish it. I will end it quickly. So, um, so I'm a contradiction for sure. And in that, in so many ways, um, while I'm also quick to react, I've mentioned, I'm also very patient in a lot of ways as well. Um, and I'm working on my patience in certain areas, but I know, and I'm self aware in the sense where in other areas I can say, I know that I'm exhibiting a lot of patience here because I'm self-aware in this moment and I can understand that, you know, maybe another person might not be so. And so figuring out how to communicate where it's more effective as opposed to where it causes more of a rift. I'm still working on that, but I'm actively working on that. So I'm definitely, I definitely am a contradiction. I'm a huge contradiction and I'm a work in progress. I'm definitely, definitely growing. Um, I am learning to be okay with an emotional side of things. Everybody doesn't get to see that part, but you know, I'm learning where it's okay to exhibit certain emotions with certain individuals and to be vulnerable with certain individuals. And that's something that I've had to kind of learn again because I've put up a wall and been able to close that off from so many people because of past experiences. And I'm also, um, a work in progress in the sense where I'm trying not to allow past experiences to affect where I'm at now negatively. Um, I am trying to focus on not letting things get to me as quickly. Um, and it's, it's taking time. It's taking a lot of time, but that's, that's, I think that's who I am right now. That's what's up. (laughs) So sis, why do you feel like just off the top of your head, why do you feel like it's important for us to think or do you think it's important for us to think about these kinds of things? Or is this just like a waste of time? No, it's so important because especially black women, especially black women, we forget ourselves in so many different instances. Mm-hmm. Um, you've spoken about you and Brian feeling a way about how your mother never really took time for herself. I know I can say that for my mom. My mom would work so hard. But she rarely took time for herself. And then being a mother now, having somebody hang off my tits 24 (laughs) seven, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Like, it's really it's really hard to take time for yourself. And that's one thing that I do make sure that I try to do. And I don't get to do it as often as I would like to. But I'm trying I, I try to take those few minutes if I can just to myself to try to just get a little bit of peace of mind before, you know, you get into the hustle and bustle of like family and whatnot. But I think it's so vital for us single married whatever with children without children to take those moments for ourselves and to reflect on who we are because we don't want to forget who we are and label ourselves with what we're doing right 
You know what I'm saying? We got to be sure to make sure that we're separating those two and we're doing those little tune ups on ourselves. Just like you change the oil in your car. You need to make sure that you change the oil on yourself. You got to make sure that you are are checking checking that and you're and you're staying in tune with who you are and making sure that you're reaching your goals and you're focusing on the things that are important to you and you're not losing sight of that in all of the things that you're doing because it's really easy to do so right i'm so glad you said that because in checking in with yourself i i think that it's critical to know these things about yourself because if you don't know who you are it's easy for you to assume the roles that people give you Exactly. Without without giving or not even the roles, but the labels or mm-hmm. the responsibilities or the expectations that people put on you without ever making sure that those things align with who you are at your core. So mm-hmm. um, I can say that for a while, for a long time, I was very tied to the labels that were placed on me daughter, great student, older sibling, like the responsibility of that being raised in a church, being a PK, like all those things, like they place labels on you. People have, and and all those labels carry assumptions that may or may not align with who you are as a person, as an individual. So don't like my, like I was boxed in to lots of different things. People, oh, because I'm from New York or because I'm from, you know, White Plains in New York or you know, because I was this person's granddaughter or this person's daughter or whatever, people expected those kinds of things. And it wasn't until I got away from a lot of those labels that I was able to discover, you know, things about myself that I before they never really knew. And those lessons have, you know, I've just learned so much about about myself. So I think one of the one of the things I wanted to say, we talked about this at the event, one of the buzz words, Tumblr words very popular words that are used right now. It's like introvert and extrovert. And I feel like people use those words incorrectly all the time. So um, many words. So ma- like people use those words all the way wrong. Um, people assume that everybody who's introverted is shy and antisocial and everybody who's extroverted is loud in the life of the party. And that actually couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so there are extroverted people who are quiet and shy and mm-hmm. there are introverted people who are social yep. and I, because it's, it's, a, it's about how you process information. It's about how you and what you need in order to be your best self. Mm-hmm. So what I've learned is that a good way to think about it and it helps me to keep the thing, the definitions clear in my mind is that introverts. Okay. Let me say this. Let me make sure I'm getting this right because it is a bit of a tongue twister. Extroverts speak to process. So they're talking through their feelings in order to get to a place of understanding. Mm -hmm. Introverts process to speak. Mm -hmm. So we have to get it all together in our minds before we have to say it. So a lot of times if I'm quiet, it doesn't mean that I'm being antisocial. It means that I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to say what I have to say because I want what I have to say to be meaningful in the same way. It's all about where you get your energy, what rejuvenates you. So extroverts get energy from being in community and socially engaging with people. People give them life, literally. Introverts get life. So we can be social and be outside and ha ha and kiki and literally tell jokes and hold court and all of that. But we need to go home and recharge ourselves so that we can be those social people again. And I, I had the definitions all wrong. And people thought because, you know, I'm silly and I can, I can laugh jokes. I can laugh and crack jokes with my friends and, you know, I, I sing or whatever people, people think, Oh my gosh, you are just like, <laughs> you're just so fearless and you're just such a people person. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Like I, I'm an introvert, but I have social skills and I can do things, you know, with people. But, you know, if I had to pick, the girls would be in here alone. Okay. (laughs) So those are the kinds of things that you learn from checking in with yourself, checking in with how, how certain certain situations make you feel Mm -hmm. checking in with, you know, what triggers you, you know? So if you out with a group of friends and everybody's doing something and it doesn't quite sit well with your spirit, there's a reason (laughs) and this, and you're not crazy. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. It just could be something that doesn't, 
click with who you are on the inside. So I think it's really important because if we don't keep track of those things, it's easy to get swept away yeah. with with what the crowd is doing. And especially in this day and age, the crowds are doing all kinds of things. <laughs> so you have to be very, very conscious of who you are and what you want and what your values are and what you're connected to. Um, who you believe in, what you believe about yourself. You have to keep uh, what you're learning about yourself. Keep all those things in mind. And like Jay said, check in with yourself periodically to make sure that you're processing all the, the different instances of your life in the most productive way and not wasting your time. And it, it ties in with our episode about boundaries because boundaries are also a part of who you are because those are the things that you'll tolerate or the things that you won't tolerate. They're the things that you'll deal with or you won't deal with. Um, and they are yours and yours alone. And it's nobody's uh, right to question that. So it ties in with that conversation about boundaries. And when you do that check in with yourself, make sure that you're establishing those boundaries, even with yourself. Like, right. Am I, you know, I know with myself, like right now I'm working like a dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm working around the clock. It's nonstop. And I have to make sure that every now and again, I'm like, all right, take a step back and like, just take like an hour to yourself because you've been going entirely too much. And making sure that you're establishing those boundaries with yourself, you're establishing those boundaries with other people, and you're doing those check-ins is going to help you to try to maintain that that healthy, um, healthy, uh, what's the mental, what's the shit called? <laughs> <laughs> what's, health, mental health. Oh my God. <laughs> help us, help us, help us. Um. Yes. Absolutely. It's very late. It's very late. It is. It is. <laughs> but, um. Yes. And totally, totally important. Um. And also, like, so you can, so you can not only also, so you can give yourself grace. Um. Like Jay said, do you know when you need to replenish yourself? But also, I tend to be really hard on myself. Mm -hmm. We all we've talked about this a lot. Giving yourself the the five minutes that you need to freak out. Because, you know, mm -hmm. freaking out comes naturally to me. But it's like, I, I think we talked about this in the No Stress Zone episode as well. But it's like have, allowing myself to have my freak out moment, but giving myself a deadline and saying, OK, you can freak out, but you got until 530, sis. And then we move forward. Yep. So I, I just wanted to throw this out there as, a, as um, something to share at the kitchen table. In hopes that, because it really, really did in the conversation that we had on Friday. Shout out to Tania and all the ladies who attended Girl Talk in the Green Room. It really, really did send me home thinking about making inventory about all the qualities of my life at this point. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. listing, because, you know, you can talk about who you are in terms of what you got all day long or what you don't have. But who are you like on the inside? I think that's super critical, especially if you out here, you know, engaging with niggas. Because niggas, if you don't know who you are, niggas will try to tell you. And they don't know you <laughs> to be telling you anything. Spoiler alert f for those who haven't seen uh, Girl Trip, Girl Strip, mm -hmm. then turn it off. It's like Regina King, Regina Hall, Regina King. Which one is it? Hall, baby. It's Hall. Hall, yeah. Her, that one. That part. <laughs> it's like Regina Hall at the Her end of the movie. was Ryan in the movie. Yeah. And we we which, allow female mm, Ryans. We do allow female Ryans. They're the only ones who are acceptable. Sorry, That's guys. Right. That's right. So she, you know, she went along with this whole you know, this whole idea with her husband about her being her business partner and, you know, hid it from everybody because in her heart of hearts, she knew that that shit was fucked up. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, when, she, you know, she was debating back and forth whether or not she was going to read the speech or if she was going to be real with herself, she decided that she was just going to let it all out. And it was so healthy for her. I'm, I mean, you could just see how refreshing it was. And it's the it's the same thing, even though it's a movie. You know, it's something that we have to apply to our lives. We have to make sure that when we're doing those check ins, that we're being 100 percent honest with ourselves. And I mean, standing up in the mess. Sometimes. Yes, that's <laughs> it. You have to you have to acknowledge the flaws because you sometimes you got to be like now, 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 you know, you know better than you that. Like, right now, girl. You like, wilding no, right now. Right. <laughs> 
are we giving? <laughs> you are wilding right now. Like you have to <laughs> check yourself. And it's hard because our arrogance and our pride steps in. But you really have to check yourself. And if you're on that journey to be a better person and to lotion your spirit and, and, and you know. Moisturize and, your soul. And deodorize <laughs> your, your brain. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like my brother, you know, in the twist of my brother's Ooh. words. Who in um, the hell? Who, because who in the hell wants a musty brain? Not I me. I certainly don't. I nobody certainly wants do a musty anything. You Not know what I'm all. saying? And nobody wants an ashy spirit. So make sure that when you're doing those check ins with, with yourself, that you're being honest with yourself. You're being 100% honest with yourself. And even, and sometimes a daily check in, you know, is good. Or sometimes even like a situational check in. Like if you're in a moment where sometimes we love to be good, wrong, and strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You realize you always have that moment. Like sometimes I don't. Like if you arguing with your nigga, right? <laughs> and you are so mad. You catch yourself like just being mad. Like you about to say some shit that is foul and <laughs> you are just mad in your spirit. And you realize that in that moment, you're out of pocket and ridiculous. You have to stop in that moment before this escalates to another level and say, I am out of pocket and ridiculous right now. Okay. And even if you're saying that to yourself and you reel it on back, like you got to do that with yourself. You have to do that in your in your relationships. You have to do that in every aspect of your life. And that's a key part to doing that check in. Major key, <laughs> major key alert. But yes, it's, that's it for the kitchen table as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, ladies, uh, check in with yourself. Check yes. in with who you are. And fellas. <laughs> Move Right. Yo. OK. So, fellas. I want you all to, I, I'm giving you a project. Oh, so homework. Your pro homework. This is because some, you know, some of y'all spoke up and, and we're like, oh, don't forget about us. We're not going to forget about you. So now I'm giving you a project. So I don't want to hear anything else about it and make sure you do it. So if you don't have title, download it. I'm sure you can get it free somewhere for some, from some time and then cancel the shit. So go watch the footnotes of 444. Jay-Z has gathered so many different men, Aziz, um, Chris Rock, uh, Chris Paul, um, Tata. He, I mean, just tons of niggas just coming together and having like this therapeutic, mature, grown man talk. And it is refreshing and it is really something for fellas to take a look at and it might help you with some of those check-ins that you need to do with yourself because some of y'all be tripping too so i strongly 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 and this is for everybody but especially for the men admonish you to go and look at the footnotes of 444 and use that when you're doing the check-in for yourself oh they do it hey so yeah um it's really <laughs> important to just remember who you are Q Mufasa. Remember. <laughs> remember. <laughs> yeah, just remember who you are. It's important to know who you are. Remember who you are out here in these streets. Um, and that's it for the kitchen table, man. Honestly? Truly. It's time for the honesty box. Hey. It's time. It's time for the honesty box. Hey. It's a oh. big old box of honesty. It's a big old box of honesty with Jaden Key. <laughs> with Jaden Key. Honesty. <laughs> that was like an avant-garde song. Yeah, man. Couldn't you just see like Grace Jones walking down the runway to it? Absolutely. With a Gumby. <laughs> so <laughs> um, our honesty box today uh, is titled A Blocked Confused Woman. My, my, my. All right. That's three my's. All right. <laughs> my, 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 my. <laughs> Your show to, look good tonight. <laughs> I love to count my minds. That's like a meter of like how like how crazy it is. If I use more than two minds, I'm singing Johnny Gill automatically. Off rip. Oh it's that's how it just goes. Me and my nose ring. Him and his nose ring. Uh so anyway, hello my lovelies. <laughs> hello, hey lovely. Thank you for actually taking time to help me in this turmoil that I call a relationship. Sorry if it's long. So oh. this is already starting off bad. You called your relationship turmoil. turmoil. Jeez. First things first, I pop a freaks all the All the honey. Don't ever oh. start your email with first Playboys, things first. Playboys, bunnies, <laughs> those getting money. 
They I'm don't want kidding. Nathan but penetration unless it Unlike smells like sanitation. Sanitation, garbage. I, I turn like, like doorknobs. Door Heart throb never. Black, Black and, and ugly, ugly as, as ever. ever. However, I say coogee down, down to the socks. socks. Rain with rocks, fill with rocks. And my jam, jam knocks. knocks in your Mitsubishi. Girls pee pee when they see me. Okay, sorry. Have a okay. hose creep me in they TP. <laughs> As I lay down laws like I like, like cop it. Stop, Stop it. it. If you think you're gonna make <laughs> a profit, don't see don't my see ones. ones. Don't, don't see, see my guns. guns. Get it? it. I tell and your friends, pop it, hit it, hit it, then, then split it in two. two. As I flow with the junior mafia, right? I I mean I just I was like we I guess we have to finish it, but I just no. Uh, we love Biggie. I'm such a bird. Sorry. Yeah, same Z's. So, okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. First things first. Uh, my boyfriend and I were together for a year, but only exclusive to each other for five months. Mm-hmm. Before actually making things official, he took me through hell and back by cheating, disappearing for weeks at a time whenever he called himself mad and coming back as if nothing happened. And of course, I forgave him and moved on. Now fast forward to my current issue with him after being in a car wreck, which caused a concussion, being carless for two weeks, catching the bus in a hundred plus degree weather and being a swollen mess from not resting. And to top this all off, my mother was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. My sympathies. The same day I was admitted for my concussion. He was not there for me emotionally. He actually pulled himself away, was going through everything I was going through. So she proceeds to go on and let us know that she was having a really hard time paying bills because of medical bills um, and she was on short term disability. Um, and this particular nigga did not do a single thing to help her. Uh, and then he responded with a oh, she told him she was totally broken. He responded with a well, at least you have your health, mm. which caused her heart to drop and crash. Um, she said she's not alone. Yes. So she said she's not typically a loan me $5 type of girl considering she's doing well for herself and he is sleeping in her house. Hmm. Um, but she was going through a lot and she needed somebody to be there for her emotionally and financially. Um, the biggest thing that pretty much set me off was that he blocked me after I tried to talk to him after five days of no correspondence. I was very crushed and I'm still going through the days without hearing from him. And it's killing me inside because this was my first relationship after being abandoned by my daughter's father. Should I move on and block him? The hell kind of siren is that? Shout out to Brooklyn. (laughs) Should I move on and block him? I'm battling with this because my mom and sister really love him. And my mom is telling me not to throw his things out of my house and give him time. She's definitely an old school woman, but I'm still very torn between my common sense and my heart. Maybe you both can help that common sense come through. I appreciate you both so much and take great pride in your thoughts and words of wisdom. Goodness gracious. Thank you, girl. I love you, Jade and Kia. Signed a blocked, confused, grown ass woman. Mm. Yes, we love you. And with love, let me just (laughs) let me just say this with all the love in my heart, sis. What you need to do is lift your hands and just tell right here. It's a good place to thank the Lord um, for getting this nigga up out your life. That's it. <laughs> uh, no, I understand that, you know, you have feelings for him and, you know, you guys connected. I understand that. And I respect that. Um, but I also feel like with respect to your, your condition and all that you've been through. Um, if, if this person did nothing to assist you or help you, it's even when, like even in the face of your apparent need, he did not offer or extend himself to help you. Um, and if he's, he's not going to help you when things are bad, he's certainly not going to help you when things are good. And much like the letter that we read last week, I think this is a situation of, you know, a nigga in your house getting all that he can get while he can get it. And then you blocking him indicated to him that the well has run dry and he's moved on. Um, So thanks. I think you I think you you just rid yourself of the leech. So what (laughs) you should do is take a shower (laughs) and, you know. Change your sheets, open up a window. Mm -hmm. You might want to hit your house with a few shots of the Lysol spray to disinfect. And then hit the blunt. And you you know what I'm saying? And you push forward. I think, who was it, Lupe Fiasco? They said, kick, kick, push, roll. That's what, that's what you, coast. (laughs) Why'd I say roll? I knew it was coast. Anyway, anyway, you, you coast is coast. 
And as far as your mother, talk about give him time. Give him time to do what? To do what? To give him time to continue to not to help you. See, this is those times when it's okay to reevaluate what your mama is saying. (laughs) Like, I'm just, I just think that you should think, think, think logically and think critically. And for one, for, for one time, for, I mean, just, just let your, your mind lead you and not your heart. Yes. Right now. Use your heart and not your eyes. No, do the opposite. Use your mind and not your heart. And don't relax your mind. Actually wake it up. Like your mind, sleep. yes, your mind needs to be fully engaged right now. You need to sit and think and fully assess all the things that you've listed to us in this email and then ask yourself why you would want to keep that in your life, Give, especially given all the things that you and your mother and your family are going through. I had a moment where I was proud of Tasha when um, Lawrence... Did you, t- did you see my tweet? No. I said, you Did you say that? I said, I'm proud of Tasha. I said, I just hope that this lasts... But it it didn't. didn't. It didn't. didn't But I was proud of her for a moment in time because I was like, all right, good. You finally are like saying you're not going to put up with certain shit. This nigga was sleeping in your house and then you fell on like really hard times because that's really that's rough what you were going through. And he didn't. He said, at least you have your health. But you didn't. This is what I'm saying. What are you talking you was about taking right medicine now? for I a concussion. concussion nigga. I do not have my health. I'm my on short term disability. Are you what the fuck do you think that's for? Do you think I'm on short term disability because I felt like taking a staycation? Like I what? I'm just trying to figure out what. I don't have my health actually. I don't have anything. I don't even have five bucks. And you had didn't even offer me a bag of chips. This is what I'm saying. Y'all got these niggas out here who don't even offer y'all chips. Was this nigga living in your house? Was he paying any bills? I don't was know he, if he was living there, but she said he was sleeping there. In that California King bed, and Cali- he was eating three no, square meals beds. a day. Do you know how big a California King bed is? It's as big as my apartment. Like, what is this? This nigga sleeping comfortably me. like a king. Please don't tell me that didn't that this this nigga was in your house, sleeping in your bed, eating your food, and he let you take the bus and he had a car to take you where you needed to go. Please don't tell me that. This is these are the things. Nicolax. This these are the things that that girl, girl, this is why I say. The Lord has just done you a solid. He sure <laughs> what, did. You, what you got to do is say thank you. If he's in his feelings because you blocked him, then he's okay. So he's a mature child. Right. right. Now, I will say that in the, in the future, one thing that I have learned about, like, from my own experience is that you cannot hold people accountable for expect, to, to meet expectations that you did not clearly establish. Right. And a lot of times we be having these niggas up in the house. And they think it's all gravy, rice and gravy, and they don't have to do anything. But it's okay and more than fair for you to be in a relationship with a man, especially somebody who is putting his penis inside of you. It is completely fair to be like, I expect, you know what I'm saying? We are in a relationship Mm -hmm. and this is what a relationship means as far as I'm concerned. If I don't have it and you have it, we got like, I'm going to need you to help me. We have it. Especially if you're going to be here using up this electricity and sleeping in my bed and all the things that she mentioned in her email. So I just feel like maybe the lesson here is that in the future, you set your expectations and you open your mouth and you say it so that no nigga can ever look at your face in your face and say, oh, I ain't know I was supposed to help you when you didn't have no car and no money. Because niggas oh, are stupid enough. To nigga, and niggas mind. will say that. Oh, I ain't yeah. know. And it's just going to piss you off even more. And then you're going to end up on an episode of Snapped. Right. So it's best that you open your mouth, speak what your expectations are, make sure you make them clear. Now, we're not victim blaming here by any means because he is also trash. I feel like this nigga and the nigga from last week need to bunk up like they need to probably go be roommates and just go be trash all over the world together. Um, and then you Terrible. and the young lady from last week need to be in your sanctuary of homes, light a candle and enjoy <laughs> the fact that these raggedy ass niggas are out of your lives. He is no good. And I don't care if your mother and your sister love him. He is trash. And okay. He was not about there for you. Right. Get his shit out of your house. Okay. And who cares what happens to it? Just get it out of there. Give it to the goodwill. Who cares? Give him a time limit to come get his shit. And if he has, still has you blocked, his bad, and then his stuff will all be donated to homeless people. And then his life will be of some substance and use in the world. And maybe he'll go watch the footnotes of 444 and become a decent man. 
So, girl, I hope that that was helpful to you. <laughs> and again, we said that all with love because all we care. We, we care. Do. And we just, I just don't, I don't feel like you should have to put up with this kind of folly and foolishness. No. It's dumb. You don't have to deal with that. Especially if you're not feeling well. Right, you're gonna girl. You're going to add a raggedy ass nigga on top of like being sick. You have been through too much. The ringer. I can't take it. I'll be praying for you and make sure. I mean, if if you want to, you can send us an update or just send us an email and let us know um, how things worked out for you. Shout out to everyone who has sent in um, responses and testimonies and yeah, from uh, Honesty Box uh, letters from episodes, previous episodes. Um, and for those people who send advice to, you know, whoever authored or wrote the um honesty box we i try to make sure to forward those along mm -hmm. um with permission of course um but yeah if yeah so if you guys have a word for this young lady send an email to getting grown getting grown pie at is it getting grown podcast getting grown podcast at gmail.com right and make sure you're sending your honesty box questions to getting grown podcast at gmail.com and yeah, and all of your petty peeves and so forth and so on. So, right, right. With that being said, let's move on to the petty peeves. Hey! And I want to be very responsible of the things I say to my sister. Because everybody know I can be real petty. P-E to the T-T-Y, honey. Petty peeves. Petty, petty. Petty peeves. Petty, petty. Petty peeves. Petty, petty. Okay, sis, do you have a petty peeve this week? I certainly do. Let's hear it. All right, then. So I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, I knew that I should have waited to send it after I sent it, but I had already sent it. So here we are. Um, so it had been sent. <laughs> I know that those, those of us who have iPhones and use iMessage, there's, I don't know about the droids. If you guys have this, then okay. But if not, just, you know, disregard. <laughs> but our, um, the iMessage has a feature where you can like, love, emphasize, laugh at a text message um, by literally like double tapping it. And I have decided that I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is annoying to me. That we are now double tapping text messages, like text messages, like in, in I know in Facebook, like I just feel like there's a difference between making an announcement and having a conversation. And if we are engaged in conversation, whether or not you like what I said is of no consequence. I need you to respond. That's the only that's that's just respond. Um, and a like doesn't mean that. Like a like is not a yes or a no. Like, especially if I ask you something, if you like it, like that's just going to blow me. And I understand when I, when I said it on Twitter, all the people stopped, started typing fast and jumping in my mentions talking about they're really <laughs> useful for group text messages, but we all know that I don't care about those. <laughs> um, oh, hold on. That's a lie. I'll tell you why. Because you just sent me a gift the other day in a group message that also said that's a lie. <laughs> Wait, did it? It did. It said somebody lied one day. And so I don't, I did not say that I did not use <laughs> group messages or I did not participate in them. There are, and I, I maybe, maybe, okay, I take that back. So not all group messages right, get on my there nerves. Are some, there are yeah. some that are completely unnecessary and they can be a lot, especially when it's, 75,000 people everybody's talking at once and you're just like just you resting. don't know some of the numbers and there's right a it's just all all of the madness but I understand that the liking so people were saying like in larger group chats the liking feature is useful and I'm like I'm telling you that there is off it's pretty rare that I'm actively participating in a larger group text yeah. so I, I'm just saying that it might be petty and I understand that y'all like it and me saying that I don't like it doesn't mean that y'all don't have to like it. Y'all can continue to double tap them text messages as much <laughs> as will make your heart content. I'm just saying that I don't like them. Like they annoy me. I think it's self-centered. Nobody cares if you like what I said. I just need you to respond to what I said. And that's my petty pieces. 
<laughs> I love it. I think it's hilarious. Um, I try, I, I think maybe those were created for, well, besides the fact that we live in the age of laziness, uh, they were created so that you don't have to put that passive aggressive LOL to end the conversation anymore. <laughs> you can now just be like, oh, I like this. And then it's done. Now, again, if somebody asks you a question and you respond with one of those like ready made responses, that's don't do that. That's don't irritating. Do that. That's irritating. really <laughs> irritating. Like if I ask you what I should bring to the barbecue and you thumbs up it, I'm going to be really pissed and not. Come. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. Like, use it properly, and then people won't get mad about it. My petty peeve actually comes from a listener. Um, She says, hi, cousins Jade and Kia. I love the podcast, but I haven't listened to all of the episodes yet, so I'm not sure if y'all have had this as a petty peeve. We clearly have not, because I'm going to read it. I cannot stand when white people call stuff ghetto. Uh. Earlier today, I had to fake an email emergency in order to exit a water cooler chat that took a sharp turn for the worse. Oh Office gosh. bro one was telling everyone how awesome and perfect his new place was, but proceeded to whine that his local grocery store was so ghetto and how he hates going there. Office mm. bro two laughed and then complained that there's no juice bars in his new area. This mm. was extremely triggering for two reasons. Office bra one and two are new to a historically black neighborhood that I grew up in. Mm. My family home is there as well as all of childhood and adolescent memories. It pains me that I'm unable to afford to live there because of the sudden unwelcome and inconvenient boom of gentrification. Ugh. My grandfather still lives there, so I went with him to a neighborhood civic club meeting where it was discussed at the grocery store that Office Bra One Hates will be torn down and moved several miles down the street to better serve the new residents. Mm. There are a lot of mostly black families in the area who don't have cars that walk to grocery stores current location. This move is most inconsiderate to them. How will they purchase food for their families? This points to a larger issue that seems to be common to a lot of inner city neighborhoods across the country, but I digress. Number two, it's so annoying to hear white people describe things as ghetto one day, appropriate it the next day, only to later describe it as a hot new trend. It's maddening. Later on that day at the office, we had a department meeting and I arrived a few minutes early. To my dismay, Office Bra 1 was there as well, this time with Office Black Guy describing his new place very loudly. When asked where it was located, Office Bra 1 exclaims with great joy in his best black scent that he lives in the hood. I almost lost my lunch, so now it's cool to be ghetto? Disgusting. Sorry for the dissertation. As a retired member of Team Type and Fast, I tend to get long-winded in explanations. Thank you, ladies, for creating a space where we magical black women can come and enrich each other. So excited for the Get and Grown merch. Annoyed in Texas, CPA. Yikes. There's I, nothing left to be said because she did that. She she did it. I mean, so white people, the ghetto is a place. It is a part of a city, generally a slummish area that is mostly minority occupied. Um, it is not for your vocabulary to use to describe your boxer braids. What the hell is a boxer braid? Ask the Kardashians, because that's what the fuck they call two cornrows. I'm sick of them. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I'm, I share your petty peeve. I cannot stand... Um, when people describe things as ghetto, cause I just think it's insulting and it irritates me. And when white people do it, it pisses me off. <clears throat> Indeed. Indeed. And that is another episode of getting grown. <laughs> in the key of Z flat. <laughs> Come on and sing. Cause you know, when I get tired, my Z gets flat. <laughs> shut your mouth yeah ladies and gentlemen boys and girls that's it for getting grown episode 19 right sis 19 hey we coming up on uh, our 20th <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah shout out to everybody for listening we hope that you enjoyed um our conversation today continue to as jay said earlier um Send your submissions for Honesty Box and Petty Peeves to get in grown podcast at gmail.com. Feel free to engage with us on Twitter. We be tweeting in these Twitter streets and on Facebook as well. Well, mostly um, Kia is tweeting in these Twitter streets. 
<sighs> Look at me trying to include you in that. In I know you are, and I thoroughly appreciate you. I just don't also don't want them to think that I am being light skinned and not responding to people. But you are being light skinned and not responding. I'm not, because literally I'll pop in, I'll read some shit, and I'll pop out because I have to go do something. But you think I'll be doing nothing? No, Heffa, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, then. All right, then. Anyway. Um, Don't project, okay? It's time for you to do a tune-up. <laughs> Girl, okay. <laughs> um, everybody, make sure that you are always um, drinking your water, uh, moisturizing your respective situations, uh, because your black will, in fact, crack if it's dry. Bye. Goodbye. Good boy. <laughs> you make me sick. Do you know that? <laughs> like pneumonia. Like, like, like whooping cough, whooping cough. What is it? Like, I like I need antibiotics. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Goodbye.